So good morning and welcome. And you know me and I know you, so we will not bother to do any introductions. You made a good choice to get up this morning and show up. Oh, we got up there. Okay. Let's see. So it's been quite a week this week. We have a new uh, Pope in Rome. I grew up Catholic, and so all of that has been kind of fascinating for me to watch that situation <coughs> unfold there. And we bid him clarity and peace, don't we? Yeah. yeah, it's it's different, and it's all God, and we understand that, and that everyone is always where they need to be. So it's, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, the church will move forward into some some good, strong, healthy, happy times. And it's St. Patrick's Day. I think a lot of you figured that out already. You got on green, or you've told me your eyes were green, or your underwear was green, or something was green. <laughs> what was it we did to kids to each other in grade school? I can't remember. You got to yeah. do something. Yeah, if you didn't have green on. Um, this goes back to the early 17th century. Uh, it was celebrated, it's celebrated in many countries, and it's not just, you know, I grew up Catholic, I thought it was a Catholic thing. It's actually celebrated in both the Lutheran, the Catholic, the Anglican, and the Eastern Orthodox religions. So a lot of different teachings subscribe to this as a feast day. There's not a lot that is known about St. Patrick himself, other than he was, I think he was originally from Britain, and when he was a young man of about 16, Irish marauders kidnapped him and took him back to Ireland. He got away from them, but then later he went back to Ireland and, and made his home there, I guess. And so people think of him as an Ir Irish person. I don't know that he was. Um, but the whole feast is also a recognition of the times that some of the older teachings, things like Celtism, moved away and Christianity came in. So for good for bad, for all that it brought with it, you know, things changed. And if you think that you're wearing green today correctly, the original color was blue. Oh. Uh, Who knew? Uh, I, 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 yeah, Karina, 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 and yeah, we got some, well, you know, all of it, right? So, yeah. And the other thing that happened this week that I thought was kind of interesting is that the 12th, whenever it was that, um, possibly Tuesday or Wednesday, was the 101st anniversary of the date on which Juliet Gordon Lowe got together with 18 other young women. They were women from churches, synagogues, orphanages, orphanages, the rich, the poor, but they all had one thing in common. They wanted to help other people. And that is the organization we call Girl Scouts of America today. <coughs> yeah, 101 years old this past week and some amazing. How many of you ladies were in the Girl Scouts? I. I think I went twice, and I think I, you know, I was in trouble already, so, you know, it, it didn't work out for too long, but I had kids that were, you know, the perennial long-term. They had that little shamrock thing, too, or whatever. But there you go. Yes, they do. Thank you. Yeah. I still have what a synchronicity. I love it. That's sweet. That happened near Savannah, Georgia, by the way, so it's right down the road, right around the corner. Yeah. And it, it really points to what happens when a couple of people decide something needs to happen and, and choose to make that happen. We have only to act upon the ideas we have for those to show up as greatness in the world. And that's what she did. And in the words of Margaret Mead, never believe that a few caring people can't change the world, for indeed that is the only thing that ever has. And people getting together and saying something needs to be different. We need a new idea. We need a new way of doing business, a new life. And so a new idea is the title of my talk today. Isn't that interesting? As we get started, I want to poll you. I want your input here now. What do you think about our world? <laughs> Anthony's <laughs> chuckling, okay? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. All unlimited right. opportunity. It's unlimited <laughs> opportunity. It is, yes. All of those things. What else? It's kind of challenging at times, isn't it? It's a little troubled, even. It's easy to turn on the TV or pick up a newspaper and think, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, that's what, not what WTF stands for, but it's interested to, <laughs> interesting and easy to think things are kind of interesting in this world, and you kind of wonder where is it all going and what's going to happen. Kind of like the world is a lot like this little video clip that we're going to watch. You can kind of get an idea of what the world is doing with itself sometimes. Hey, baby. Hello. Hello. 
Okay, we'll do one more sequence and then we'll stop. organism and it's not just a world thing do you do that with yourself anybody in here go ah oh, you make an assessment we make assessments about how we should be what we should look like how we should act how much money we should have and then we begin to assess where we fall short and the next thing you know we have taken off on this litany of self-criticism okay we have literally taken a part of ourselves and extricated it and put it out there and gone, that is bad, that is wrong, that is not how I want to be. And it's an incredibly judgmental thing that we do, you know. It's really powerful. I first saw that um, every year Mike and I go to uh, UMAS, which is a Unity Ministers conference that's over in um, Canuga in Hendersonville in September. And we go, and I get to and soak up all the rich minister stuff for free, and he does all the videography, and I get to, to just sit and look pretty and do my thing. It's really a blast. And they show, somebody showed that last year, and I've been dying to drag it out and share it with you all because it's really, I think, a hilarious clip, and it speaks volumes to sometimes how we are in the world. Um, you know, but we get it in this teaching that we don't have to live in that place. That there's this higher consciousness thing going on all the time. And if we would step into that, we would be an expression of one. We would be an expression of one at home with ourselves, with our bodies, with our minds, with our hearts, with the feelings, the emotions, the thoughts, all the stuff that comes up. And we would be more at peace, at least with the world around us, wouldn't we? Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. So I had a really amazing pleasure this week. Um, there is a, an organization that has been around for many, many years that is called the International New Thought Alliance. And this week, they, the Center, the Center for Spiritual Living, Asheville, John and Barbara, hosted a three-day conference that was an, an INTA, an International New Thought Alliance conference. Now, if you don't know what New Thought is, what I would say is think about kind of an umbrella. Okay. And the title of that umbrella is New Thought. And what we find up <clears throat> under that is not just our own science of mind, but we find unity. And I know many of you have heard or read the works of uh, Emmett Fox. Emmett Fox was a divine science minister, very similar to science of mind or religious science. So you would find divine science there too. You could perhaps even call Christian science a kissing cousin of the New Thought Movement. They don't want to be under the umbrella. They've told us, mm -hmm. no, we don't want to go under your umbrella. But, you know, it, it is what it is. very similar teaching to what we have. And so all of that is called New Thought. So this organization that was formed many, many years ago to try to promote not only New Thought as a whole, but also support ministers. It was a minister's conference. Um, had a, a sh big shebang thing over in Asheville this week. And I went over Wednesday night to the Wednesday evening, you know, so they have like a Sunday on Wednesday service this past week, and went to that and was there. And the president of our organization, who is Ken Gordon, he is the, he's not the president, I'm sorry, he's the spiritual leader of Centers for Spiritual Living, was there, and he talked about the world getting a new idea. And he said that this is coming. It isn't like we can say yes to it or we can say no to it. The world is changing, and he feels that what we are about in this movement and who we are, both as individuals and collectively, 
speaks very significantly to the uh, process of this movement going forward and this idea coming to, to be incorporated. He said this idea, this new idea, it is an idea of inclusion. It is an idea that is so full, so rich and potent that it cannot be kept down. And so I think our little piece of pokeweed, I believe that is, really reflects that, that something so seemingly uh, not mainstream accepted can move forward in the world and in the blink of an eye, a few short years, can be center stage. He also talked very much from the heart about how he believes that, that so many people are looking and grasping and seeking and wanting what we have here, which is a connection with something that is not just within, but that is all-inclusive, that leaves nothing out. So let's look at the picture for a moment. We've got a piece of pokeweed here, and I don't know if any of you have ever had to weed like a walkway or something like that. If you have, you've probably seen some pokeweed and you've probably seen it doing this, pushing its way up. I have a, a stone walkway and it's really amazing to me that there's all this incredible stone and then there's mortar between it. And even between the mortar, stuff like this manages to poke its little head up. I used to, years ago, when I didn't know any better, shoot it with some god-awful chemicals. Um, now I just kind of <coughs> ask it to go move into somebody else's yard or something, you know. Over there where they mow the grass, I don't have to mow the walkway, you know. Um, but, you know, if we were to look at this theoretically, we would say this could not happen. A little tiny weed does not have the possibility, the power that it would take to push through that concrete. That concrete was created to support and carry thousands of pounds of vehicle and cargo. It's, it's not meant to give way to something little, like a weed, and yet it, it does that. And as that weed is just a little echo of really unlimited potential of love sought to do its bidding, it moved something even bigger than dirt. It moved concrete. It broke through something to find its destiny in the rays of the sun. And you know that we are each and every one just like this. Okay? We are moving, striving, pushing, yearning, hoping, dreaming, knowing centers of whatever is coming next for us. Have you ever tried to stop that process of wanting things, of desiring something more bigger, newer, different, more complete, fuller in your life? I think that if you succeed in that, we will not see you anymore. I don't think you can actually do that because I think that thing comes from the ele very element of what we are, that source stuff that lives inside of us. That thing that whether it's asked for or not, whether it's bidden or not, it's here. We can't keep it at bay. There's a paraphrase from the, A Course in Miracles that talks about that. They tell us that it is only at the altar of God that we will find peace and that this altar is within us because God put it there. The divine put it there. It's planted so deeply you can't burn it out. You can't stop it from pushing through to do what it came here to do. And so it's really very interesting when we are living life and doing everything that we know how to do to move forward in life and we have this sensation of everything falling apart and nothing working. Have any of you ever had that experience or am I like totally and completely on my own up here? I didn't think so. You know, we get reminded of that, that pokeweed. Another thing that Ken Gordon said Wednesday night was that we are the ones who are responsible for fashioning and seeding, planning this new idea that the world is so desperately seeking. We really are the new idea, aren't we? We're coming forth from the mind of the divine with every succeeding moment. For us to be bringers of light that we are, we must be ever mindful in our dealings with ourselves. Or we fall back a screen or two into that place of the puppy who's growling at its own legs. 
There's a beautiful Native American statement that I have used with you. We've talked about this before. That no tree has leaves that are so stupid as to fight, um, or no branches, I'm sorry, no tree has branches so stupid as to fight amongst themselves because they understand that then nothing wins. This place, this higher consciousness that we need to be from, that we need to live from, that we need to call forth from within us is that place that that incredibly frequently loved uh, quote from Rumi reminds me of where he says, out beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Do you know that space? Do you know that space? Yeah. It takes some work to get there, doesn't it? And it's certainly worth the effort. He goes on to tell us that ideas and language and even the phrase each other don't make sense anymore when we get to that place in consciousness. That state of consciousness is our home. That's where we're meant to be all the time. That is the state of consciousness I believe that Ernest Holmes recognized as what we call heaven. We were never meant to leave. And we are definitely meant to be there. Ernest goes on to tell us that to desert the truth in the hour of need is to prove that we don't know truth. And what I know about each of us today here is that if you're sitting in this room, you have gotten to a place in consciousness where you know there's something better, there's something greater, there's something different, something far more true, with a capital T, than the hands on the clock or the condition of this thing you call your body or even the pretense of all the life conundrums that you're dealing with. Anybody in here not have any conundrums? <laughs> Some of mine have fur. <laughs> mine too. Yeah. Yes. You know, we didn't get here by happenstance. We didn't just fall in the door of Open Door Center. We didn't just drop into this body like something, you know, threw a pebble and it landed. We are here because we said yes. We are here because we said, I want to go, I want to be here, I want to do this, and I not only want to do it for this, whatever this represents, this soul, but I want to do it for this, and this, and this, and every one of us, and everyone out there. Because with every breath we take, and every truth we think, and every yes to life that we emit, we are changing this world. We are the the change bringers. We are it. We are a new idea. We figured it out, guys, that we can go kicking and screaming. How many of you have kicked and screamed? Yeah, through some debt. I mean, actually, the 70s and the 80s, okay? Yeah, you know, a lot of that. Or we can do like Nana. We didn't get to see too much of her. But but we can do what Nana did, which is, at eight, I think she's 88. She's singing and dancing, baby. Okay. At the very end of that, if you uh, go on YouTube and turn the volume up, Nana says some really interesting language, too. Okay. <laughs> Nana's one of my, you know, like patron saints or something, I think. Okay. <clears throat> Ken Gordon beckons us to demand of the universe, to question the universe. What is it that needs to be done here? What is it that is mine to do? Because you came here with a mission. You came here for a purpose. This ain't just, you know, like off the wall, okay? It ain't off the rack, not a one of us. Ken reminds us that our teacher Ernest Holmes says, our divine nature never deserts us. Like the prodigal son, we may wander into far countries of despair, but the divinity within us ever gently urges us back to the center of our own true being. It ever reminds us of its presence. If we permit it, this spiritual self will direct our every decision with intelligence. It will make perfect the way before us. It will. There is nothing that is ever happening, ever has happened, is happening, or will happen that is wrong. Not a thing. Now I love this idea of asking the universe questions. So much so that those of you with a, a background in some of our certificated science and mind classes, you know that we start at 
in the, the foundational level classes, working with things like affirmations, much like Katie read a little while ago, just statements that we create that forge uh, a place, a, clear, a sense of clarity, and a, a, a sense of knowingness about what we are moving toward, what we are creating in our worlds. <coughs> I have switched from doing affirmations and spiritual mind treatment to literally just going around asking the question. Asking the question, what is mine to do today? What am I here for? It's kind of like what do you want, only I don't consider whatever I'm asking to be, you know, out there. It's just everywhere. After I do that, and then I start listening. I'll ask a question 10 or 15 or 20 times, and I'll start listening. And I'll get the most amazing stuff come to my mind. And a lot of it is, you know, that ego Katie mentioned, it goes wrong. No, can't do that. Life doesn't happen that way. That will never work. And, you know, for the first time, one of the one of the most significant times in my life, I've gone, shut up. Okay. And listen to you today. I'm listen, listening to that guidance. It's been really powerful. That idea of asking, that is not a new thing. Think about this. It goes all the way back to the Bible in Matthew where it tells us, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and that door will be opened. It isn't like a maybe, guys. It isn't like knock at the door and hope. Okay. Sometimes we have to ask for a while. What is mine to do here? Sometimes we have to ask, what is the right question for me to ask here to get the information I need to move forward? Some amazing things have happened since I have been doing that. Now the thing I have found out too is that the answers don't all come in a nice, complete, whole, tidy bundle. I get a little piece of it. And that, you know, I'm one of these people who wants the whole thing right here, right now, okay? And then I will make my decision about what I want to do, and it doesn't happen like that. There's a scene in the movie The Secret that really epitomizes that. And in the movie, they show a car with the headlights on sitting in the dark. Well, if you decide to get in your car tonight after the sun goes down, and you're going to drive to California, you'll get in that vehicle, you'll turn on the headlights, you're going to head down the road. Eventually, you'll probably pick up 40 over here near Maggie Valley. You can take it all the way to California if you want to. I think Mike and I are going to do that this summer. But what will happen is that when you get out here on 40, it will be dark. You are only going to be able to see about 200 yards in front of your vehicle. And it kind of makes you think about what you're doing when you're driving 90 miles an hour, doesn't it? You know? <laughs> it's kind of, hmm, could you really stop? Probably not, okay? But realistically, can you see the destination? No. Do you know that the destination is out there? Yeah. I mean, you know, California hasn't fall, fallen off into the Pacific yet. I don't know that it will. Some teachings say it will. But those questions have been around for a long time. And it is ours to ask and listen and then simply move forward in that guidance and not question how. Michael Beckwith in his teachings tells us that how, you know, how is always the wrong question to ask. If you're asking how, you're getting into the ego, you're getting into the left brain, you're getting into that part of me that loves to know, okay, well today I'm going to get up and go to this. Well, how am I going to do that? Because I like how. We don't ask how. We ask what. What is mine to do? How is this going to, and not how, you know, in what way is this going to unfold? Asking that is given. Then there's another statement from the Koran that tells us, Whoever follows my guidance, no fear shall come upon them, nor shall they grieve. And I like that idea. You know, I could do away with the fear and the grief in my life, couldn't you? Okay? So we ask, we listen, and we follow. If you feel like everything is crashing down upon you, perhaps your finances are stifling, your health is not good, you may look at the world and think it's going, you know, to hell in a handbasket. We understand hell is just another state of consciousness. It's not a very fun one. If you feel like you can't make it through another moment or another hour or another day, recognize that that is no emergency. It is simply the emergence of another idea. And the first thing that little seed ever had to do was break out of a shell. Then it had to move the earth. It had to move dirt. Sandra Ray, the great metaphysician, teaches that love pushes up anything unlike it. 
Have you ever walked into a place where you knew you were loved and begun to cry? For no reason, no storyline. It's because you walked in and felt the love. Okay? That's what it does. That's what happens right there. When, when that emergence of that new idea is coming forth, it is nothing but that seed moving the dirt away <coughs> to get to the clarity of the light. The world is changing. <coughs> you and I and every one of us here, we are here because we are midwives. Let's change the world. And from another amazing science of mind person, Gregory Toole, who is at home office out in, where are they now, Golden, Colorado. I can't remember his title, but he's one of the leaders in Centers for Spiritual Living. He just published a book. It's called A Simple Guide to Planetary Transformation. I think I'm going to have to get it because simple sounds really good when it comes to planetary transformation. Gregory tells us change can happen only when individuals like you and me make the shift. It will not happen by some decree of government. So quit looking to Washington. Okay. Nor will it happen by a call to action from a dynamic spiritual leader although I'll gladly use a match if it will light your fire. It will happen when and because each of us, one by one, embarks on a journey of healing, of awakening, and renewal. It will happen when we decide that it will happen. So I ask you today to be the idea you came here to be and to know that you are loved. Thank you.